Social media companies have been under increasing pressure this week to fight hate speech and regulate harmful content on their platforms. Radio host Alex Jones has been removed from Apple, Spotify and Facebook for his rhetoric. Twitter has not yet followed suit. Just this morning, Facebook says it's starting an authorization process for pages with a large audience in the U.S. Sri Srinivasan is former chief digital officer of New York City and a social media strategist and consultant. Joins us here at Post 9. Happy Friday, Sri. Great to have you back. Always good to be back. Thank you. So I'm wondering, have we reached the point where finally tech companies are realizing premium content drives engagement and it's different from just any other account and they've got to treat accounts like Alex Jones as if there's shows on their networks that are subject to standards and maybe being canceled maybe different from my account just a little account sitting there on Facebook I think this is a good way to compare like a television show and what you're responsible for and what you do on these social networks. For years, all of them said, we're not responsible, we're just a platform. What people say on there doesn't matter. What people comment on there on other, pla you know, on other channels doesn't matter. And that has to change now because we're seeing all kinds of impact from this kind of carelessness and loose rules for all these months and years. But, but once they're on the hook partly for this, then they're really on the hook for everything, right? So, right. so, so they're going to have to get really serious about actually watching this content. It seems like you know, Jack Dorsey initially seemed to say, hey, if Alex Jones had done this stuff on Twitter and Periscope that he did elsewhere, that would be a different story. But they didn't. Now CNN saying, well, actually, yes, he did. We found all this content. And Twitter seems to be playing catch-up. It's like they don't even know what's on there. What I couldn't believe is that someone in Twitter would have had to have watched every single minute of all of Alex Jones' shows to understand that there was a problem, and how could they swear that it wasn't happening, right? So this is somewhere where somebody, not Jack, but somewhere, someone else was responsible and assured him that this is not, he's done something differently on Twitter, but he wasn't doing anything different on Twitter. Alex Jones is the same Alex Jones. You know, when people tell you who they are, believe them, and that's what we've seen. Right. But, but today it's Alex Jones, who knows who it's going to be tomorrow. And Jack is clearly trying to avoid that slippery slope, right, because we don't know. And we have seen, you know, everything from charges of bullying against the president. So people say, why is the president allowed to not just threaten right. violence against entire countries, right. but just kind of be mean-spirited online or other people? So where do you draw the line? But do you think Twitter is isolated here? And would you expect Jack to have to retrench a bit on this stance they've taken? In or? this particular case, I don't think they have any choice. Really? Yeah, because I think that to say Alex Jones, I mean, they, they painted themselves into the corner, right? They said that if Alex Jones did what he did on other places, he's out. He'll now have to be out. Otherwise, there's nowhere to, no other way to kind of reconcile this. Because otherwise, what do your policies even mean? Exactly. And I think that, well, that to me is sort of one of the keys here. I've been talking about this all, all week is, you know, we've been dating, debating about the rules and what the rules of each of these companies should be. But even more than that, if you're going to have rules on your book, as a private company, you're entitled to you know, laying those out and letting the markets react as they will, but you got to enforce them. And that to me is one of the big issues here, especially when we're talking about Twitter, given the fact that according to their policy book, Alex Jones has broken those rules. So it's like, do they need to hire more people? Do, are their costs going to go up the way we're seeing that happen with Facebook? Well, I think there, there are two points here. One is the First Amendment argument doesn't make sense, right? These are private companies, so it's not First Amendment. But the second is, even Alex Jones and Infowars, have, they have rules about community engagement, and they say, yeah. if you don't follow our rules, we'll kick you out. So this is what everybody has to do. They have to stick to their own rules that they have written down. Change the rules then but they're not going to be able to do that in this current environment. Are you seeing, after Snap lost DAUs this quarter, uh, Twitter, we know growth has been essentially flat. Facebook, we've seen some Nielsen metrics for July that we're not encouraging on the core app. Peak social or, or well, not? Are you, going, <laughs> are you going there at all? No, not, not yet, because I think that what we are seeing is a slowdown in the growth. I mean, there, is a limit, there are a limited number of people in the world, but you're going to also have younger people growing into using these services, new people discovering them, finding use cases. But I think in the sense of what Wall Street does, they punish Twitter unfairly. They were fixing and cleaning up the product 
and they got punished. This would be if GM made better cars and they got punished for making the cars better. Mm. They should maybe take a, you know, a hit for the cars, the expense going up on the cars, but the cars are fundamentally better and Wall Street should reward it, but Wall Street does not work that way. And here we are at the stock exchange. Yeah. So do <laughs> investors have to rewrite their models around social? Because initially the idea was, we'll bring, build these platforms, they'll be great. All the people in the world will get on them. We'll learn about those people and target ads toward them. It's just that simple. Now it seems engagement is necessary, content is necessary, and oh my goodness, now there are all these costs that come along with making sure not only is the content good, but that it's safe. Uh, not causing dangers. Are these starting to look more like media companies? I think they are, and they have been for years. They have been media companies. They didn't realize it, and they were in denial, and they were treated not like media companies. They need to be. Social media companies need to grow up, and the CEOs in charge of all of them have to say, how do we make sure that we continue to deliver for our customers, but also our investors? And sometimes that's at, you know, at, at odds with, uh, with each other. Yeah. The next question, of course, is, is it up to the CEOs or do regulators need to step in? I don't think regulators have a role in this yet. Uh, I think that there are ways in which if they self-police, if they bring in people who others trust and government takes seriously, because it's not just here in Washington, right? We're also seeing Europe takes this all much more seriously. They've been aware of these issues for years, whereas Americans kind of just much more loose with our privacy, confidentiality, security. And I think it's good that these are global companies now so that they need to answer kind of held to be a higher to be held to a higher standard.